Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 4 Vyuhas and Their Shaktis Chakra Be that as it may, O Goddess, if thou hast such a free hand in creation, then deign to explain the process of creation. O Lotus-born, I salute thee. Shri, in essence, I consist of consciousness and matchless bliss like pure space. I am Narayani, Hari's state of existence, and my nature resembles his. My essence being consciousness, I am neither inert nor active, nor an intermediary state between the two. I represent the nature peculiar to Hari, the all-pervasive Vishnu, who is the soul of all and has the same character as myself. His form is undifferentiated, homogeneous, and inscrutable, and I, also undifferentiated, am of his form and possess perfect tranquility. From time to time, a billion billionth particle of ourselves, composed of consciousness, stirs into activity. That particle, which is known as Sisriksha, the urge to create, is in the form, I will create according to my liking. Whereupon I, with that particle of myself, instantaneously evolve into Vishuddhatva, the pure creation. As the brilliance of a diamond shines forth in all directions, so does my pure course of creative activity diffuse its rays in every direction. Pure creation issues from my form of concentrated absolute consciousness, whose tranquility resembles a cloudless sky or a still ocean. Devoid of all activity, ever blissful, pure, all-embracing, and supreme, the primeval jnana, knowledge, becomes manifest and is called Sankarshan. The divine attribute Aishwarya is my sovereign power to create the universe without dependence on any factor outside myself. That is my form Pradyumna, the excellent person. My Shakti is that imminent, irresistible, and which pervades the whole of this variegated universe known as my Aniruddha form. These resplendent blue lotus-eyed Purushas, Pradyumna, Aniruddha, and Sankarshan, are my forms manifesting the divine attributes Vijnana, Aishwarya, and Shakti, Kriya. Pradyumna, Aniruddha, and Sankarshan are responsible for the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of creation, respectively. My primordial form, when the urge to create the universe first stirs in me, is Vasudeva, who may be compared to an absolutely waveless ocean or a cloudless sky. Vasudeva is the manifestation of all six of my divine attributes, Jnana, Shakti, Bala, Aishwarya, Virya, and Tejas, in equal proportion. When, of these attributes, only Jnana and Bala are manifested, I am Sankarshan, who supports the entire creation without aid. He manifests himself dimly like black marks faintly discerned on human bodies. Hence, in Vedanta literature, he is named Bala Sankarshan. My manifestation of Virya and Aishwarya is named Pradyumna. Since virya signifies immutability, pradyumna is changeless. My manifestation of shakti and tejas is known as aniruddha. Tejas means absolute sovereignty and irresistibility. 
The sacred literature issues from Sankarshan like a clap of thunder. All activities originate from God Pradyumna. All fruits of such activities are said to issue from Aniruddha. In the creation of this universe, Aniruddha is verily the creator. Pradyumna sustains what the former has created, and the creation thus protected by him is devoured by Lord Shankarshan. These gods function with spontaneous benevolence through the acts of creation, maintenance, and dissolution in accordance with the sacred texts, dharma, religious duties, and the fruits thereof. Though each god of the Chaturvyuha manifests only one particular attribute or aspect, yet all six divine attributes are vested in all three of them, so that in fact they stand on the same footing, neither less nor more than the eternal Vasudev. Their major and minor limbs and intelligence, etc., are not phenomenal. Their bodies containing the divine sixfold attributes are divine and eternal. O Lord of Heaven, it is erroneous to think that there is any essential difference between these manifestations. Such differentiations are envisioned by Scripture to stress the particular activity associated with each. Aishwarya is not different from knowledge. And again, Shakti is not different from Aishwarya. These, O Chakra, are my forms envisioned to focus meditation. First, there is only the substance of reality. Then comes the state of being. Next, there is the object created. And last of all, there is activity. All created beings pass through these consecutive states. I voluntarily divide myself into four, as Vasudev and so on, but continue to infuse all forms with my Sangvid, consciousness. In each form, the gods Vasudev and the others, in turn, again divide themselves into three forms, such as Keshava, etc. These are the Vyuhantaras, so called by the Pancharatra. And these twelve gods are engaged in conducting the activities of creation. These projections, as Padmanabha, etc., are the Vibhava, evolution of Hari, as Aniruddha, who, though omnipresent, yet assumes these manifold forms for the benefit of the worlds. From time to time, to benefit the world, the Lord of the world appears in the form of a man or God. Such manifestations constitute a different type of vibhava. God's image, conceived by himself or by various deities, sages, mains, or demigods, for favoring the worlds, are his archa forms, consisting of pure knowledge. Thus I have briefly explained the pure course of creation. Now listen as I describe the other course of creation containing the three gunas, qualities of phenomenal existence. The jnana, pure knowledge described to you earlier, evolves into sattva guna. Aishwarya evolves into rajoguna and shakti into tamoguna. In the process of evolution, Rajoguna plays the leading role, whilst Sattva and Tamoguna stand by as auxiliaries. As I have already stated, a millionth of a millionth part of myself is again divided, and using a millionth of a millionth particle of that fraction, I create the universe. At the very beginning of Saguna creation, I, Mahalakshmi, the great goddess vested with the three gunas, focusing my creative urge upon the Rajaguna, start creating. To promote the welfare of the worlds, Mahalakshmi, who is beautifully formed, manifests with herself as the substratum. The two divine states of being, Agni and Soma, 
characterized as man and woman. Soma has four arms, large eyes, a complexion like refined gold, and she holds a citron, a club, a shield, and a vessel containing Amrita. That is myself, famed as the exquisitely limbed Mahalakshmi, also known as Mahashri, Chanda, Chandi, and Chandika. I am also called Bhadrakali, Bhadra, Kali, Durga, Maheshwari, and Triguna. And since I am the wife of Bhagavat, the Holy One, I am also known as Bhagavati. These and many more are considered to be my names, caused by the various modifications of my original state, and I shall describe them in full. I am called Mahalakshmi because I am characterized all over the universe as merit and demerit, as completed and yet to be completed, and also because I am respected as Mahat, the highest. In my aspect as Mahat, the ultimate resort of the noble, I am called Mahashri. As the wife of Chanda, I am Chandi, and being of a fierce nature, I am Chandika. In my aspect of being beneficial, I am Bhadra. When I encourage goodness, I am Kali, which is also my name when I destroy the hostile. As I simultaneously regulate the conduct of both friends and enemies by good or bad means respectively, I am renowned as Bhadrakali. Furthermore, I am called Maya of inscrutable qualities. As I am great and all-pervading, I am called Mahamaya. Since I bewitch all, I am called Mohini. I am called Durga, as I am difficult to reach, and also because I save my devotees. As I connect or link, so I am known as Yoga or Yoga Maya. As I confer knowledge on men, so I am known as Maya Yoga. By virtue of my existence in the form of all six divine attributes, I am known as Bhagavati, because I participate with Bhagavan in performing the sacrifice called Bhagavat, God's protection of those who have taken refuge in Him. I am regarded as His wife. Owing to my vastness, I am regarded as Vyoman. Because of my characteristic of abundance, I am known as Puri. As I represent Paravara, the Absolute, I am called Paravara. On account of my power to render all things possible, I am called Shakti. Because of my invariable power to delight, I am Ragni. As I am always in the condition of peacefulness, so I am described as Shanta. The universe is produced from me as a mode of myself, hence I am called Prakriti. I am the only shelter to be resorted to, and I destroy the misfortunes of the pious. I listen to the lamentations of devotees and gladden the world with my virtues. I inhere in all beings, Shaye, and take delight in Rame, the virtuous. I am ever worshipped by the gods and am the embodiment of Vishnu. Beholding these attributes of mine, the learned in the Vedas and Vedantas, who know how to relate attributes to their possessor, extol me as Shri. I myself am eternal manifested as all and ever-existent. As the tutelary deity of the complex of the three phenomenal gunas, I am named Triguna. Through my urge to create, I cause a disturbance in the perfect equilibrium of the three gunas. With a complexion like pure gold and adorned with golden ornaments, 
I fill the otherwise dark world with my own brilliance. In the beginning, to fill the empty universe with myself, I assumed another form, consisting of only Tamo Guna. She is dark like a mass of calyrium. Her worthy face has ferocious teeth and large eyes, and she is a lady with a slender waist. She has mighty arms adorned with sword, water pot, severed head, and shield. She wears a garland composed of severed heads and has a diadem of snakes. Emanating from me, Thomasy, choicest of maidens, said to me, O oh, my mother, I salute thee again and again. Deign to give me a name and function. I said to the fair Thomasy, choicest of maidens, I shall give you names and functions, Mahakali, Mahamaya, Mahamari, Kshuddha, Trisha, Nidra, Krishna, Ekavira, Kalratri, and Duratyaya. These are your names, and your functions are to be inferred from those names. And he who learns them with understanding attains happiness. Considering the creation to be incomplete, I fill it up with my first form, which resembles the beauty of the moon and is pervaded by the manifestation of sattva. She, that first form, became a noble lady holding in her hands a rudraksha mala, an elephant goad, a veena, and a hook. And I conferred upon her the following names and functions. Mahavidya, Mahavani, Bharati, Vak, Saraswati, Arya, Brahmi, Mahadenu, Vedagarbha, Dha, and Gihi. Her functions are related to these names and represent the various aspects of the miraculous activity generated by Sattvaguna. These three of us are said to be the support of the universe and the mothers of all.